With the L cluster finally under the collective's total control, uh, it feels like there's really only one way to say this. It's time to literally do all the things. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Toxoids in our Heralds of the Dark Nova series. So this is Lixer, the home planet of the Elixir Collective. And there are a couple of things I'd like to do right as I start here. I can't build a gateway just yet, but I would like to do that soon. I'll show you where I would like to build one. There are probably a bunch of gateways I'd like to build, but... For now, we're going to build an orbital ring around Lixir in order to make that planet even cooler than it already is as a Gaia world. So that's one of the first steps I need to take. We also have a rather ridiculous alloy surplus that I'd like to take advantage of. So what I'm going to start looking at... All right, here I would like to have... Let's just do a hydroponics bay, resource silos... And a transit hub, maybe. And we'll have a transit hub here, too. And resource silos, because these are relatively fringe systems. But we have just a bunch of extra alloys coming in every month now. And I almost don't know what to do with them all. We also have a bunch of new colonies that are soon going to be available to us here. I've sent a colony ship to literally every single one of these planets. So that's going to be... That's going to be enough to keep us busy for the next little while. But I did also look into what I need to do for our situation with the Attrition Ascension perks. Place. And I, I'm, not, I'm not particularly concerned with waiting until the last perk to go ahead and select Become the Crisis. I did a little bit of, of investigation into what that process looks like, but for the most part, I wanted to save it for kind of discovering it in the series. So once I started seeing the amount of detail in what I was reading, I was like, okay, no, we're going to play. We're just going to figure it out as we go. So we have some colony ships already Research. underway, I think. Yep, three colony ships already underway. All right, we just unlocked some more building slots. Looks like we can unlock some more gene modification points. Ooh, let's do that. Absolutely. And now we can bring our science ships back since there's no more exploring to do and we can assist research on our major planets. What are the major planets now? Oh, the Shrin sector doesn't have a governor. How'd that happen? Let's just give them a unity boost. Okay. Which sectors are the major research producers? So, Eskrik. Still a major research producer. Also, this scientist. Yeah, we need to go ahead and take care of the rubricator, don't we? So, you come excavate this site. And we're just going to, you know, we're just going to bring the entire fleet into orbit around Rathlin. No reason. No reason at all. Everything's fine. It's completely fine. We just, you know, want to have them there for no reason whatsoever. And um, let's see what else we can do. All right, so we have a terraforming candidate available here. Let's go ahead and make this an alpine world. Yeah, I can afford that, no problem. Any other terraforming candidates? I forgot that, that that icon was added. That's really so useful for seeing the terraforming candidates clearly. Any others? Any at all? I uh, don't see any. I feel like there might have been at least one more. But that's fine. So we have a number of worlds terraforming at the moment. Let's take another look now. So Eskrik is one of our planets that will definitely need some support from a science ship. I guess another one, it makes sense since we've sent the first science ship to take care of that project. We'll send that one to our home world. And then we have... I mean, Rathlin is the Relic World, so we're not going to send one there for now. Kiln Edge is pretty good. Wow, yeah, Levin Bank is still, like, far and away the next best option. So we're going to send them there. That's in the Vanico system, right next to Omen. And we're going to stay on Speed 2. We could do Speed 3, but it wouldn't be any faster than Speed 2 at this point in the, in the game. And holy crap, I have a lot to build. Hold on. <laughs> Stop everything. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to focus on, yeah, I'm going to focus on things that help with our various mineral production, or uh, rare resource production, not mineral production, but rare resource production. So let's kind of stay fixated on that to the maximum extent. I could just rotate as I go down the line. Wouldn't be anything wrong with that. 
There could also still be some planets that haven't fully had their resources set up, so I'll need to double check that as well. I could do resource processing centers that would improve foundry drone output, but we're doing so well on that front that I I might do it on planets that really need it, but for now I think I'm just going to focus on not not planets that really need it. A better way to say it would be on planets that already are producing tons of alloys so that that bonus was as useful as possible. But for now, I think I just like to focus on kind of rotating between the resource types. We have dust, desert, and crystal reef here. It looks like those have both been fully built up. We have crystalline caverns in a portal research area here. So have we fully mined the crystals on this planet? Yes, we have. Although we could probably have additional crystal production. Let's go ahead and clear that. And then some more moats. Okay, so this has been fully built up. We have two of each special resource type. Do more crystals. We'll do more moats here. More moats here as well. Crystal forest and metal boneyard. Do I have... Oh, wow, hang on. Crystal mines. Hey, okay. What do the metal boneyards do? Maximum mining districts. All right, cool. So Skarnis doesn't have anything special. Let's just do exotic gas. We'll upgrade you. Skurn does have a few special things. Has an isolated valley. Can we do anything with that, though? Because since we are a gestalt consciousness, we can't really have an alien zoo because we don't we don't do zoos, okay? <laughs> we don't we just don't we don't do that stuff. It's not not in our DNA, literally. All right, so we have uh, Bubbling Swamp and Batharian Fields. Don't we have Batharian Power Plants unlocked? Yes, we do. Check that out. It's been a while since I've been able to build one of those. All right, so it looks like these colony ships are well underway. Let's continue looking at what we can do. I would like... Hang on. Yeah, that definitely needs to be upgraded, as does the minute the Meneth one. We need to build a ton more defenses, but what I would like to do is just make sure that all of my defense platforms are now fully built up. We've got our fleets built, and we'll probably have more fleets, especially once we become the Crisis. But, um, okay, we have some additional worlds available. Let's go ahead and start with these. This is, okay, well, uh, I didn't mean to see Levasa, say Levasa, but I hit the A button. I was scrolling around as I did that, so, okay. We'll stick with that. Dock stain, sure. And last but not least, Leshik. There we go. So I don't think, don't think we have any duplicate. Nice. So the Ferrothon system is finished. Let's see what it takes in order to do the first level. Yeah, that's what I thought. 10,000 alloys. It's going to be a minute. We have the unity we need for it, though. The Otharian nation has van vanquished an ancient threat in the distant Frenfid system. Now, I can't actually build... I can't do Galactic Wonders just yet, because we need to finish this thing. Need to finish it completely. Right, so we have multiple colonies already establishing themselves. It's going to be kind of nuts building up this many new planets at once. It'll also be a bit of a drain on our energy surplus, but thankfully we have a ridiculous energy surplus, so it's fine. Okay. What could I do here? This is the Dandar station. Already have a transit hub. Yeah, just a defense grid supercomputer is probably a good idea. Some additional defensive platforms. The Ferrothon shipyard, you know what you could... Mm, we could have... We could have Titan assembly yards here and have two places that build Titans. So let's do that. 
Okay, we definitely need to upgrade this citadel, and now we are once again <laughs> out of alloys. That won't be the case for long. We're going to keep improving that particular side of our economy, especially once we have all these colonies underway. It's going to be kind of nuts. Mining station output plus 10%. That came at a good time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and research alloy nanoplants and the alloy processing facilities on star bases. How long until we have... That's 19 months until we have that extra gene modification point. We're researching the quantum catapults. So I'll sit for a moment and... I mean, we can sell... Senate has failed the resolution to repeal minor administrative sanctions. Oh well. Okay, so we're building up to 10,000 uh, alloys. Almost said minerals again. As quickly as we can. Nice. Kleptomaniac rats finally taking care of the rubricator. Toppled over buildings, crashed spaceships, lumps of melted junk, and trinkets burned to a crisp indicate that the former inhabitants of Rathlin fled their homes in the midst of losing battle against a superior foe. The presence of bodies bearing foreign military insignia suggests it may have been infighting between clans of rats native to different homeworlds. Their evacuation efforts were impeded by their unwillingness to abandon their treasured trinkets, and many lost their lives, scrabbling to save completely mundane items. One artifact, however, seems to have held a special place in their society, the Rubricator. It appears they fought long and hard to save it, but ultimately had to leave it behind. Curious. How am I doing on, let's see, relics? There's a crisis tab. <laughs> nice. All right, so we're at 26 minor artifacts. I need 50 if I'm going to be able to unlock the secrets of the Baal. So I don't know if I'm going to get there, but we can we can keep trying. <laughs> Establishing the All right, I need to go ahead and build this anchorage and then upgrade that. I don't want to build anything else. Because again, we're saving. But I also need to take care of the naval capacity gap there. Holy crap. <laughs> Just the sheer number of new sectors. Let's see. If I were to make a sector here, it would be one, two. Yeah, this would contain everything. Oh. I didn't realize this was here. I'll have you come back once you're done with that. All right, so we're just waiting for that to pop. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. Completely fine. Not concerned about that situation whatsoever. Was there anything else I was waiting on? Like, there were so many things that were kind of waiting for that particular event to transpire. Now that we have the L cluster, it's like there, I had planets to terraform. I had the rubricator. I had to think about becoming the crisis. We had to get the hyperlane network built, but that's done. We multitasked and we got that done. What else? I think that's mostly everything. All right. It'll come to me if there's anything else. But for now... Oh, nice. So this orbital ring has been built. So I can go ahead and build. It's going to cost me some some alloys to upgrade it to tier 2. But now we have this orbital ring around Elixir, which is super cool. Oh man, I can't wait to figure out more about this. Look at that. So wait, now that I've built an orbital ring, does that count as a megastructure? Or do I have to fully upgrade it? Does that count as a megastructure? I wonder. It does not. But it says fully upgrade, so maybe I need to fully and completely upgrade it. Establishing lithosphere. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm establishing so many colonies. I'm not going to know what to do with myself. All right. Debris analyzed. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead and start the next phase of the construction of the mega shipyard. Alloy nano plants are done. Ooh, foundry drone output improvement, battleship hull points improvement. Lots of good choices here. Let's see. 
yeah, let's improve Foundry Drone output because that's just one of the most important things for us to be building right now. More and more alloys, as much as possible. There is an order to the rat's chaos. In a somewhat official-looking building towards the center of town, there is a digital inventory of every single item complete with their origins, gross misinterpretations of their intended uses, as well as some highly unhelpful notes on where to find them. The Rubricator, described as a thingamajig maker with magical powers, has its right has its place to the right of the Empress's lilac ribbon under her snout swabs on the four-legged box with a funny face, wherever that is. All right, so we have six more minor artifacts. We're actually gaining a fair number of minor artifacts from this, so I'm somewhat optimistic. I'm somewhat optimistic. Attrition complete. Ships upgraded. All right, so how is this station doing? All right, still working on the upgrade. All right, we have an extra gene modification point. That could come in handy. Climate optimization stations. Interesting. All right, I'm going to wait for that to fully upgrade before I do anything else. I don't know how many, how many tiers there are. I imagine there are three. Could be four or five. All right, so how many do I have right now? I'm at 30. Okay. Well, if, I, if I'm lucky, I just need 18 more. Establishing Holy crap. So many new colonies. Let me go ahead and establish this sector, if I can. Well, I guess I can't just yet. Although I could make this a sector and give, and that way there would be a governor here. So let's do that. A governor just for this one system. But I like that idea because it's a really productive system. So also, yeah, the governor would be red fruit in their erudite. So why not go ahead and do that? So we've started to have some governors that belong to the new bale. And then it looks like, yeah, we probably need to go ahead and build a hive district here. Look at how many new colonies we have going. Holy crap. All right, how are we doing on resources? Very good. All right, I can probably afford, I do have terraforming gases active. Volatile moats are good. This is interesting. Like, I forgot about, I completely forgot about nutritional plenitude. Although I very much doubt I need it. Yeah, I don't have any additional edicts that I really want right now. So we're going to hold off. Alright, so do we have more colony ships on the way anywhere? We should. It seems like maybe there are some planets that... Let's take a look. Maybe there are some systems that didn't get planets queued up. All right, we have colony ships on the way to those two planets, but it doesn't look like there are any colony ships on the way to these. Yeah, there aren't. <laughs> Lay harm. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Stranol. I don't know if I have a planet named Stranol. That's one of the things that's tough about this. There, there are a number of things that I'm, I, I'm just not sure about. All right. Diplomatic weight from fleet power. Opposed. Opposed. We're against. No thank you. Here we go. God, that sound always scares me. The excavating team has discovered the source of the foul stench and is ill bo and it is ill boating. Closer to closer to the center of the city are enormous piles of dried fecal matter and pools of corrosive bile that exude toxic levels of hydrogen sulfide, making protective equipment necessary to proceed further. The archaeologists could not identify the alien DNA in the fecal matter, but the piles contain partially digested hoarders. Whatever consumed these aliens swallowed them whole. Even more disconcerting is the discovery of a fresh pile. Curious. Okay. Six minor artifacts. I just need that to happen two more times. 
Just need it to happen two more times. And that's it. And I'll have what I need for the secrets of the Baal. This series continues to be the gift that keeps on giving. All right, we're going to build another industrial district here. Now, some of these resources, some of these planets should have spawned. Yeah, there are rare resources here. Crystalline caverns? Oh my god, it's just nuts. All right, so let's go ahead and activate the last bail again. <laughs> again. All right, Kiln Edge is already a Gaia world. All of these are already Gaia worlds. We've transformed all of them. <laughs> We've transformed these. Skarnis. I mean, it's a nice planet, but it's not a resource-heavy planet, or a research-heavy planet yet, so... Rothland, maybe eventually, but for now... Yeah, those have already been transformed. I think everything in Lixir has been transformed. Weiston hasn't. It's the one planet that hasn't been transformed at all. That's so funny. All right, well, in that case, I guess it's O to transformation then, isn't it? Either that or we can wait to transform one of the planets that's being colonized right now. That might be the better idea. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to wait. Weissen is only a 10-slot world. It can wait. It can wait. It's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that we might get what we need here. Because right now we're at 38. I only need it to give me six artifacts twice more. These are called artifacts, right? Yeah, minor artifacts. That's all I need. I can't believe I have three titans. Just look at these fleets crisscrossed. All right, here we go. Sentinel droids. The excavations carried out by our archaeology drones on Rathlen have somehow activated several ancient sentinel droids. The, the hostile robots have been contained for now, but there is no way past them. Unless they can be neutralized, an alternate route will have to be found. So we can neutralize them. Yeah, let's just... Let's just neutralize them. Alright, so... That didn't actually give us anything, unfortunately. All right, so kiln stain. This is a 13 slot. Probably not going to be worth. Let's see what we can do here. So we're going to do the same thing we've always done to start things off. We're going to start with spawning pools. Sensorium suite. Probably do some research labs. And then it seems like this is a planet that... Go ahead and build a bioreactor. Why not? Uh, Ustin is 20 slots, so this might be... This is in Terminal Eagers. This might be a Gaia planet very shortly. Alright, so... Decisions. New Baal, life seeding. Same thing. We're going to do... Spawning pools. Are we out of minerals? Holy crap. Sensorium Suite. This is definitely going to be a heavy alloy world. So I'm going to go ahead and build it with that in mind. We can't build a resource processing center yet because there's not a hive nexus, but we'll get there. We'll build a bioreactor. How about that? Okay, and this just has 14 slots. There are no special resources. I can clear a couple of blockers. Those are already cleared up. 
Okay, excellent. We've got a couple of choices here. Let's see. Strintok Intrinsic discovered an ancient cache of resources among the ruins on Rathlen. They are even now in the process of being shipped off to our central stores. Nice. All right, so I really needed minor artifacts, though. <laughs> Just saying. Could you, could you work on that, maybe? Please? Pretty please? All right, so Ascension Perks Unlocked. Yes, please. Let's get that done. All right, so Winter Stain. You need some things. Spawning pools, specifically. Sensorium Suite, specifically. Let's do Synaptic Nodes and... Alloy Foundry's there, too. Oh, and by the way, now that we have this set up, we can go ahead and select. Yeah, let's have a, a governor that makes clearing blockers cheaper. That seems like a really, really good idea. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't want it called the Kilnstein sector. So we're going to have it called the egress sector because it's based in the terminal egress perfect organization surpassing nature is not something new for this collective during the terraforming process of grunor prime every hill was considered and every piece of fauna was strategically placed the planet has now ended up being a perfectly organized logistical paradise for our autonomous drones to produce the collective so this is the perfect organization modifier giving the following effects resources from jobs plus 10 percent max districts plus 20 percent happiness minus 50 percent Radioactive flora. While cleaning out the radiation in Evol 3's atmosphere and soil, our terraforming drones had to call in our xenobiologists. They had found a species that seemed to thrive off the radiation and was now wilting. Even more curious, this species appears to be presapient and on the cusp of achieving sentience. Now, as the final soil scrubbers are approaching, we have to decide what to do with this new life. We have destroyed their habitat, now we have to preserve them. What? While not applicable to us, their genetic material could be useful. So the radiotrophic trait for gene modding. Sure. Let's go ahead and say we're going to use the radiotrophic trait for gene modding. The idea that their genetic, genetic material could be useful. Um, oh, wow. We have an additional planet where this has happened. Uh, why are you even bothering with this weed? Finish the terraforming. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right, so that was several terraforming projects that just finished. So I can now order colonies on those. Rinstain, yep. Let's call this Grunerstain, or Grunstain. How about that? That works for me. And then Nomotar. <laughs> Pitnock, sure. That is now Pitnock. So those will all go into existing sectors, thankfully. Forgefall has an additional slot on it. I've already built everything we can as far as its special resources, so... I guess I don't have too many resource silos built, so we'll build one on Forgefall, because that's a very remote planet, where, like, that's one of the safest places that we can possibly have resource production. Oh, nice. We can go ahead and upgrade this to Tier 3. What's it look like now? Oh, that's cool. I freaking love that. I'm excited to see what like happens to the ring as we further build it. It just looks like the homeworld of a race that's going to become the crisis, you know? It just just looks that way. <laughs> All right, the Tharboreden Syndicate. I was right. They were called the Syndicate. Okay, there's a Democratic Tharboreden Mandate, so they're broken off from the Syndicate. I thought I was going crazy. Like a few episodes ago, I was like, weren't they called a Syndicate? What's happening? I'm so confused. All right. Colony seated. Nice. Okay, so here, let's just do... And we're out of minerals. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a bit of a challenge. 
because we still have a decent mineral output, but it's dropping. It's dropping pretty fast, honestly. <laughs> so I'll have to keep an eye on that because we're losing that pretty fast. Okay, very fast. Faster than we should be. All right, let's clear that. Alloy foundries for sure. And then we can have synaptic nodes here. All right, so this is just going to give us access to additional districts. We'll do spawning pools, sensorium suite, synaptic nodes. And a Batharian power plant. Nice. I didn't realize there were Batharian fields, but there definitely are. All right. Spawning pools. Synaptic nodes. And there we go. We are out again. This is going to happen a good bit until we get these basic colonies set up. A lot of building to do on them. Alloy foundries. Look at all the sectors in the freaking egress, or all the planets in the egress sector. That's crazy. Holy crap, but I've been recording for 31 minutes already. This is how much fun we have. <laughs> I wasn't even watching the timer. I just have so much to do now. I'm so accustomed to like waiting for the freaking L cluster to be available and waiting for the fleet to build up to be able to take on the freaking Grey Tempest that now it's like, oh, I've been playing for 31 minutes. I should probably stop the episode. Kleptomaniac rats. At the very center of the city, overlooking the main square, is a grand, ostensibly decorated palace with a garish neon sign advertising the Empress Motel. Inside it are lavish chambers filled to the brim with treasure from which the Empress and her board of trusted advisors governed. It is also where the hoarders held their last stand, defending their Empress and her precious rubricator. With any luck, the, rubric the rubricator can still be found in its usual spot by the Empress's lilac ribbon. Curious. All right, so we need six more of those. Governing shifts in the Aramathian Council. Following a long period of growing sport for the Xeno... All right, so the Aramathians are now Xenophilic. Don't care. Don't care. Sorry. Okay. Okay, I have to stop. <laughs> because I've got to start another episode. So, we're going to stop this one here. And in the next one, we're very likely to finish off the Guardian of the Rubricator and get that particular artifact. We're also well on our way to the construction of the first stage of the mega shipyard site, and we have plenty, and I mean plenty, of alloys with which to continue upgrading literally everything. So I'm probably going to kick off the next episode with just spamming a lot of these upgrades to these star bases so that we can have citadels in as many places as possible. So definitely going to continue to live up to our namesake as a defensive and a rock like very, very uh, vindictive and um, stalwart race, particularly vindictive after what happened to the Baal, right? So that's kind of a newer development, but we're stalwart, we're defensive, we're rock people, and we're going to make sure that we have locked down our territory to the maximum possible extent prior to becoming the crisis. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.